say I want to take all of these points. I'm just going to clean out my project too. I don't need that anymore. By the way, it says here, clear a memory of current data. Indicate, tell me what do you want to get rid of? That's what's written there. Then you have to pick it physically. And then if you don't want a confirmation box every time, just tick this thing. I know what I'm doing. If I press this OK button, it's out of memory, it's gone. Okay. That tells me, hey, something changed and you haven't saved it yet. It's red. See that? That's green, meaning that CAD element was pulled off, pulled off the hard drive. It hasn't changed. Okay. So only the survey project 2 is now there. And that did change. So I need to save it. So I can press here, save. Uh, or I can say select all. I can clear selection or just pick the element I want. And so I don't want a confirmation. Okay. So it cleans out project two. You didn't see anything happen because the display was switched off. Okay. All right. So I want a coordinate table of these points. Okay. Now I'm working with points. They are very dark blue. I'm going to change them quickly. You should tell me these things, people. I don't see what you see. Okay. Is that better? Slightly. Make it yellow. Pink. Sure. Uh, a light pink. Uh, one of these. Or even lighter. I don't think I have a pink. <laughs> My ID card is pink. Now you don't want to know when I ID stuff. Okay. Talking about ID. Okay, it's not on. Okay, I have to switch it on. So in CAD, ID. Yeah, I didn't take you off the image. I just, I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm one of those. I hung up my, I had to, I had to give back my, my Plato certificate. I had to rip it off my frame and roll it up and send it back to them. No, they said if I'm a non-practicing surveyor, I'm not allowed to have a survey technician registration, Plato registration certificate. So, so that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to pay the 200 rand a year for nothing. I'm a, I'm a service provider. But I can tell you, my, my, my survey, I'm a survey technician, so I got that certificate, so you can know, I'm, I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not, I, I don't have any grievances, any bad feelings about that. Uh, okay. So, if you like model maker CAD and you don't go into AutoCAD or any other CAD that's out there. I don't sell model maker if I do market it. I don't sell it as a CAD program, but it's fantastic for people that don't want to go anywhere else. They've got model maker. They want to do as much as they can in here and they're happy with it. And, and I can say, and I use AutoCAD as sort of a benchmark because everybody knows AutoCAD. That as long as they've been doing CAD, We've been doing design and working with surveyors and, and do what you guys do. So our CAD sort of developed as an add-on, but it got to a point where if you didn't have survey maker and you had to draw a GP by hand, what would have taken five days in AutoCAD could take three days in model maker. And then survey maker came and now we can do it in a Friday afternoon. Okay, so it's, but yeah, I just wanted to say that. So CAD-wise, it is pretty potent. And if I do a CAD course, it takes three days to get through all the functionality. Literally, I sit for three days, this button does this, this button does this, and this is how I apply it, and I did do that for three days long. So the CAD's pretty decent, okay. So in CAD, um, there's an ID menu, and there's do ID, there's a thing called ID on the fly. Um, and for some reason, my ID on the fly is not on. Maybe I need some CAD. 
maybe the CAD is off. Oh yeah, there we go. So in order to use ID on the fly, you have to have CAD displayed, it seems. I never knew that. Okay. Oh, by the way, can you see that little the little dots running everywhere? This is a new feature. It tells you the polyline you're on and where it tracks, which is fantastic. Because you can when you select something, you actually know what you're selecting. So there's a line in there, it's just a single line. There's there's that line. I don't even I don't see the see the line, but it's there. I know it. Okay, so it's awesome this. So you're gonna see a lot of that today. I just like to make mine a little bit smaller. Is that still clear enough when it changes? Yeah, okay. All right. <clears throat> so here we go. So I can click and drag. This is called ID on the fly. Okay. And the old ID on the fly could only do all of those options related to CAD, but now we can also ID points. And if you use the strings module, you can also do strings. So I'm just going to do the points for now. So it's ID or selected. Okay. So if you're not familiar, we're selecting the points. We call it ID. Okay. And because they ID, we can now use it. Okay. So I can hold in shift and right click. This is also ID on the fly. And then for CAD, I can move anything that's ID, copy it, delete it, rotate it, change its attributes, or whatever about it. Change maybe ID a specific layer or whatever. Or I can ID everything on CAD or, or, or DTM or strings, ID all. Or ID new means deselect them. Or invert it. So if it's ID, it becomes un -ID. Okay? So it's just a quick way to filter and get to I want, where I want quickly. And then I can drive it further, CAD, DTM, or strings. Each one has its own man ID, do ID. So manipulate ID is to, to take what is ID and to work with it, to do something with it. That's manipulate ID, okay? Do ID is to perform a ID that's not on this list. So if I'm on my points and I go to DTM now and I say do ID, I can say, well, I've got 227 points, which is the total number of points in this file. So if I had to quickly count something, this is a great way to do it. Uh, in fact, I can go to man ID and just go and say, run a report for me. And it tells you the, the extent, the average Y, the extents, average X and heights and averages of all the points that are ID. It tells you the different codes used and how many of them are there. So how many manual covers do we need to buy? Okay. How many stop signs do we have? Just ID all your points and there it is. You see what I'm saying? Okay. That was a man ID report. I'm going to go back to do ID. And I'm going to go to say, well, I, I want to exclude. So the same tool that includes the selection is the same tool I use to exclude. So currently they are ID. So I want to un-ID some of them based on codes. I'll scan my codes and I'll say those spot shots and that road sign one there and that point A, I don't want them selected. So I'll say, okay. So there's 166 usable points left. In fact, I don't want the road edge points either. So I'll just go in there or you could have said, no, I don't, I know what it's called, just RE. And if, you want to, it started with RE and you could also add a few asterisks there and it will just, anything that starts with RE, it is just select them as also. Okay, so you can really get in there. Okay, so now I'm left with 49 points that are usable points that I can do stuff with. So somebody asked me for a coordinate list for setting out. These are the coordinates, so I can immediately go to man ID and throw them into an editor. Okay, that's not what I want. How much time do I have left? And I have some more time. Okay, I, I will keep you busy. Are you okay with everything and the pace I'm going at? It's all good. Okay. Sorry, I have to speak fast. There's lots to show. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, okay, we've got them added. It's all good. So there's a feature in here that a lot, I know a lot of you do not use. It's called InCAD. A thing called blocks. Okay, so um, currently I added some CAD previously, so all of this CAD is already associated to blocks somewhere. 
There's also a block called Hatch Legend, which seems to be in my way. So I'm just saying, no, don't display it. And if I replot it, it should go off. And maybe it's not that one. Oh, it could be the values in it. Yeah, so the values disappeared. They were associated with that block. But just to illustrate it. Okay, so I'm going to switch it back on. There they're back. Okay. Um, and I can take all of them and associate them with that block. Um, and so on. But that's not what I'm after. I'm after these coordinates and putting them in a table because this is new. All right, so we go to utilities and there's a thing here that says copy ID TTM. So for that button to work, I needed points and I needed them to be ID'd. So for if you teaching yourself, you was, oh, huh, ID points. Oh, I need the points. So get the points there. Okay, now I need to ID them because it says ID points. So then you have to figure that out. That's how you have to think when you follow the logic. Okay. A lot of courses that I do, people try to remember the button and the sequence of buttons. Don't remember any buttons in Model Maker. There's a logic. What am I working with? What do I want to do? And then you're going to drive yourself to where you need to be. Okay. Right. So from DTM points. So we click on that and then it asks us, what do I want from those points? Codes and coordinates, the tags and coordinates, so the code and the tags is two separate descriptions, or both descriptions and the coordinates, or only the coordinates. And let's say I want to do co codes and coordinates only, and then I can see it brought in my coordinates into this little table. And if you no notice, there's also a thing that says import from Excel. So you go to Excel, grab, select, copy, come here, press paste, or paste there. Huh. Right, that one will probably bring it from a file, that one also. This one will just paste it straight in. And now, this button appeared. Okay, so you will never see that button unless you've got data in here. So don't try to remember the button. Okay, watch the video. <laughs> okay. Um, so we expanded some buttons in here to make our experience a little bit better. So we're going to just say that. And then it asks me... Uh, there's the normal option just did this. It just took everything that's in the table and just put it into CAD somewhere. And then I told Ben, I said, no, 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 it's not lacquer. We need to do something better, yeah? And we could then go and build our own custom pattern and you can have a history of certain patterns. So if you might have um, things like a town planner, you might have a number of urban with some other description in a table in Excel. Whatever the format of that thing, and it's got a certain text width, and so, it's, and so you'll create a sort of a custom pattern, which is literally the easiest thing to do. But for some people, it's a challenge, but that's why I'm here. I'm going to help you through that. Okay, so I can teach you how to build patterns. So, but in that pattern, we have put little keywords in that pattern, that associates itself with the different fields of data, all right? So you can then build your own little pattern and, and give it some other name. Mine is called Quirt Frame Generic 2. I had to try and generify it, okay? That's my world a little bit, okay? And then you, the fixed column list is the one you always used, okay? And this then said variable, header, and column list. And then it comes up with this thing, which you have to have a degree to understand no, it's not so too bad. It says, in this table, field A is the code. B is the Y, C is the X, and D is the Z. So if I go to that thing again, it goes like this. A equals description. That D-E-S-C is what I type in there for my own use. Okay? And it is plus... 20 means it's 20 mils wide on plan, comma. And then I say field B is actually the Y, so I have to type in there Y, because that's the description of the header. And it's also a certain width. So I'm going to make this, uh, let's make it 40. I don't know how wide it's going to need to be. And then C is actually my X, and let's make that one 40 as well. And D is my Z. And that one, I'll make it 30. 
And then there's nothing after that, so I'll just delete that portion. And then there's some settings here which I'm not going to go into, but you can say this is a setting out coordinates. And like in Server Maker, you can split them into maximum number of rows of data. So if you have 500 coordinates, you don't want one table of 500 coordinates. You want to split them into 100, 100, 100, 100. This does that. And in that, if you want your tables to be next to each other, that value is zero. If you want them to separate it, you just add a little value in there and it just separates them. And it's all blocks. So you can grab the whole block and move it if you need to put it in your new positions. Okay, then there's heading. So I'll just put in the heading, uh, whatever. Okay, and this is called uh, something else. Okay, all right. So the pattern, the pattern knows the, the, the tag, the code, and the y, the x, and the z. Knows we, or the, no, I'm building it yet. It's one line of, the pattern is just one line of data. This then is used and it builds everything that you're going to see now. There. Done. You can. That history, um, if I go into that, this is also a history. So this, whatever I did here, can be repeated. So I see, oh, it's too wide there. So let's make that a 20. Uh, that must be a 20. That's probably going to be okay with a 10. So currently at this scale, these values are then used to do whatever it needs to do. Okay, and then I'll say, okay, that goes there. Oh, that's pretty. I like it. But not too many lines. Oh, okay. I want to split them into 20 lines each. Okay, so that goes there. That's cool, eh? I you don't hear any applause. <laughs> you know how long I was dreaming about this? <laughs> okay. This used to be a huge job to draw all of that stuff. Okay. And the beauty of this is you can go to blocks and you should see it there. And I can say here yeah, under block, move any selected block. And you can grab it and put it wherever you want to. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Okay. All right. So that was our coordinate blocks.